Let's be honest, playing Halo with a mouse and keyboard can be pretty rough at times. So today, I want to talk about the best mouse and keyboard settings and keybinds that you can use to give yourself the best chance against those pesky controller players. The first and most important thing to do when it comes to playing any FPS game on mouse and keyboard is finding a sensitivity that's comfortable to you. Some people new to FPS games think that having a higher sensitivity is better because then you can hit some of those crazy flicks by barely moving your wrist. And while that is true, for most players you're going to want to play on a much lower sensitivity. This lower sensitivity is going to allow you to make minor adjustments easier without your aim flying all over the place. So now you're probably wondering what's a good sensitivity to play at. Let us back up a tiny bit because your effective sensitivity in any game is basically your mouse DPI times the in-game sensitivity. If you don't know your mouse's DPI, most gaming mice can be adjusted in their software, or if you have a cheaper mouse, the box or spec should tell you. In general, most people are going to range anywhere from 400 DPI on the low end of the normalish range to probably about 1600 DPI on the higher end. Regardless of what you pick or set your mouse at though, it doesn't really matter. You just need to set your in-game sensitivity accordingly and just be kind of aware of how it works. The only small thing to note here is that using a slightly lower mouse DPI does give you flexibility with the in-game sensitivity. So what I mean when I say this is if you use 1600 DPI, your adjustments with in-game sensitivity are going to affect your effective sensitivity in-game much more than if you were using 800 DPI where those changes in the in-game sensitivity slider are gonna affect your effective sensitivity only about half as much. Now that we understand DPI and sensitivity, or at least understand enough to get us by for setting our settings, we can now talk about finding your optimal sensitivity. Here is where it totally depends on what you're comfortable with and how much space you have on your desk and your mouse pad, etc. I use a mouse DPI of 800 with an in-game sensitivity of 1.2 for Halo. I feel this allows me the ability to turn around quick enough if I get caught off guard, while also being low enough that I can make those micro adjustments during BR fights to come out on top. When finding your optimal setting though, it all comes down to what you feel comfortable using and if you prefer to aim with your wrist or your arm. Wrist players are going to play at a higher sensitivity versus primarily players who aim with their arm, so what I would suggest is that if you're someone who plays on a dramatically higher sensitivity, assuming you have the desk space, is to knock it down a bit and give it an honest go at playing on a lower sensitivity. One important trick here in Halo, and honestly a lot of other FPS games, if you ever find a sensitivity that you like, but it's too high or too low when you scope in, you can adjust the zoom sensitivity scale on its own. I just use one for mine so it doesn't change for me, but plenty of people will adjust it here a slight bit to their comfort level. Say you want to change it to 0.8 so that when you scope in it moves a little slower, or you want to change it to 1.2 so when you scope in it moves a little faster. You can mess with it a bit and find what you're most comfortable using. Now that we've covered sensitivity, probably the most important part of playing on mouse and keyboard, we can move on to some of the other more Halo specific settings you're going to want. So the first setting you're going to see on this menu is the look and flight inversion. This is pretty self-explanatory, but it basically would make if you move your mouse up, you'd look down. If you move it down, you'd look up, etc. I obviously play with this off. I think there are people, crazy people, that play with this on, but I would suggest just leaving it off as it's kind of counterintuitive. It's not really worth the effort to try and learn. It makes a tiny bit more sense for flight inversion, as that is something that makes a little more sense intuitively, but I still just leave it off altogether. The next setting is going to be crouch behavior. So for this one, I use hold. So the difference here is between hold and toggle. Hold is going to make it so that whatever your keybind for crouch is, for me control, you have to hold that button if you want to stay crouched or toggle, you know, you just click it on and off. You click it once, you crouch, you have to click it again to uncrouch. I use hold here for a variety of reasons. The main one being that hold crouch behavior allows you to more effectively crouch strafe during a fight. When you're strafing during a BR fight, you can hit control, throw it in a little crouch, Whereas if you were using toggle, you'd have to hit control to crouch and you have to hit control again to stand up and it just gets kind of clunky in the middle of gunfights. Also a big thing that you can do with hold crouch behavior is you can more effectively Gandhi hop. And if you don't know what that is, that's where you jump in the air and you spam your crouch button and it kind of messes with your hitbox a little bit, making it harder to hit your head, therefore making it harder to finish you off in a close BR fight. Next setting and a pretty important one is mouse acceleration. If you don't know what mouse acceleration is, basic premise is that the faster you flick your mouse, the farther your character in game is going to turn. So if you have this off, if you took the entire length of your mouse pad, regardless of how fast you move your mouse across it, you're always going to turn in game the same exact amount if you go all the way across the mouse pad. However, using mouse excel, 
if you were to flick extremely fast to the right or to the left really bit it's going to turn you a lot further than if you were to slowly move all the way across your mouse pad this is a setting that if you were to get used to it does have some benefits especially in a game like halo where you might want a higher sensitivity for close range fights and a lower sensitivity for long range fights However, it does get kind of hard to get the muscle memory of it down and it takes a lot of hours to become competent with mouse acceleration on or otherwise it just throws off your aim all over the place so I suggest just leaving this off. The next setting is mouse smoothing. This is another one you're just going to turn off. Having it on kind of messes with your input from the mouse into the game and it's just not worth having on. Now that we've gone over the settings that you're going to want to use for mouse and keyboard, we're now going to move on to the keybinds. Keybinds are going to be a lot more subjective as these are what you are most comfortable playing with. So I'm just going to share what I found most comfortable and most useful and you can play with it a bit and kind of find out on your own what you like. For this video we're just going to talk about the keybinds for Halo 2, although it pretty much applies for all the games in the Master Chief Collection other than Halo 4 when it eventually comes and Halo Reach because they have armor abilities in Sprint. So starting up here at the top, I just leave open text chat on the default keybind which is J. You don't really ever need to use text chat when you're in a game so it doesn't really matter if it's nowhere near your hand so you just leave that on J and it should be good. The next keybind is push to talk and so you're going to want to put push to talk on something that you can easily hit while you're moving around, you're in a fight, you're trying to avoid enemies because you want to be able to call out to your teammates as much as you can. So for this I use caps lock because that's easy for me to hit with my pinky. Like I said though you're just going to want something that's close to where your hand sits and something you're comfortable hitting. For the movement keys, I just use the defaults W, A, S, and D. I don't really know why you would change any of those. And then jump, I use space. I will say eventually when double binds come into the Master Chief Collection in a lot of games, I'll use space and mouse wheel down for jump. However, currently Halo does not support dual binds, so right now I just leave it at space. Next up is crouch. That one I also just leave on the default at left control. That is something you definitely want to be able to hit in the middle of a gunfight so that you can do those crouch strays. So make sure it's a button that you can hit easily with your pinky or whatever finger you want to use. While I personally don't bind this one to my mouse, this is a good one that you can bind to your mouse if you have extra buttons on the side. Another button that's not bad for crouch is shift, although the main reason I don't use shift for this is in some of the other Halo games like Halo Reach, I use shift for those armor abilities and I just didn't want to get mixed up in my head. Down into the action section, you know, we're going to leave fire, fire secondary, zoom, all to the defaults. Zoom in and zoom out, those are keys I never really hit, so again, I leave those on the default. You can zoom in by hitting mouse 2 a second time to do the second zoom in, and then more often than not, if I want to zoom out, I'll just hit Q twice to switch to my secondary and then back is a good way for me to zoom out. Next up is melee. This is another button that you're going to want close, and so I have that on F. Reload on R, just like it is standard in all games. And then next up is the throw grenade button. Like I mentioned, many mouses have buttons along the side that you can bind things to. So I use mouse forward for grenades because I find in Halo you throw a lot of grenades and you want to be able to do those while you're on the move without having to move your hand around. So I use the button on the side of my mouse for this. Action, I just leave on E. And then for change weapon, I have that on Q because I like to hit that a lot while I'm running around. I use that to de-scope the sniper rifle, etc. And that takes you into some of the more useless abilities like switch grenades. I have that on one. That's something I kind of want close to my hand, but it's not super important. So I have it up there. Toggle flashlight. I literally never hit that button playing multiplayer. And then dual wield. I mean, you'll pretty much never hit that other than really odd occasions. So just leave it wherever. Then the vehicle controls. These aren't something I've messed with as much, but vehicle function one, I have on mouse two. Vehicle function two on left control and vehicle function three on space. And then the banshee bomb I have on Q. I like to be able to pull the scoreboard up while I'm playing a lot, so I have that on tab, although Halo 2 Anniversary is kind of weird because if you pull up the scoreboard while you're moving, it just stops you from moving, so I'm not a huge fan of that. However, in the other games, I like to be able to hit it while I'm moving around, see how many people are up on the enemy team, and variety of other things. Maybe I just want to look at how many kills I have or how terrible I'm doing. Anyways, that kind of covers the optimal mouse and keyboard settings and keybinds for Halo on PC. I hope this helps if you're trying to get into Halo on mouse and keyboard, and if you personally have any other tips that you'd like to share, go ahead and drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And if for some reason you want to watch me play Halo or other random games, you can follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rash with 3 rs or if you want to read my random thoughts, you can follow me on Twitter at rash with 4 rs and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>